Good afternoon, everybody. The brave Richard. And uh, I work as uh, assistant professor in one of the medical colleges in Kerala. And uh, also as a consultant physician of uh, Atreya Ayurveda. You know Atreya Ayurveda? Uh, we are the biggest group of uh, clinics in Moscow. We have, uh, we are, for the last 16 years, we are based in Moscow. Uh, we have uh, three clinics in Moscow and one in Nizhny Novgorod and uh, more than 1,000 satisfied customers. Okay, uh, coming to the topic, before the topic, I would like to uh, bring your attention to this book, which is called Death by Prescription. It was written by uh, Ray D. Strand. He was uh, uh, one of the leading, I mean, world famous uh, nutritional and preventive medicine specialist. And this book uh, describes the depth of a uh, problem which is arising due to over medication. This book says that uh, the prescription medication is the third leading cause of death in US. And in United States, it is, uh, there is five times more chance of uh, death of a person due to this unwanted medication than an accident. And this book also describes the unhealthy relationship between the Food and Drug Administration in the United States and uh, the pharmaceutical companies. Okay. Now let's come to the topic. So I have prepared this webinar uh, with the assumption that you all, all are having a basic idea on the Ayurvedic concepts, like basic concepts of Ayurveda. And uh, uh, like the concepts of dosha, dushya, thadu, ama, akni, like. Otherwise, Otherwise, it is almost impossible to describe such a vast topic like Ayurveda, uh, Ayurvedic basics in uh, two hours of time. Now, coming to the topic, uh, there is a, a radical difference between the concept or the approach, approach of medicine of Ayurveda and the traditional medicine. It is based on one reductionism and the other on holism. So let's see what are these concepts. So reductionism means the explaining complex phenomena by the properties of the individual components. That is the body is dissected into small, small parts like tissue organs, tissues, cells, each part of the cell and studied. And it is based on the belief that the more you dissect, the closer you get to the cause of the problem. So this concept sees the whole body as a combination of cells and small, small uh, functions in the body. So this is reductionism. And let's see this picture. Here you can see two, two pictures. Here, uh, here this, this is, uh, you can see a bird. It's uh, different functions inside is described like this. It is like, uh, it, can, it sees this bird as a machine. And here you can see a watch, wristwatch. It's each like it have a cover, then a needle and machine, individual parts like this. So it believes that a complex system is nothing but the sum of its parts. And uh, so that it's, it, it 
tries to divide the main system into individual parts and conquer each part that is divide and conquer it is the principle of treatment in reductionism and it believes that complex problems are solvable by dividing them into smaller simpler and thus more breakable units but the holism thinks in a different way see you can see here the picture of a cycle a bicycle here holism says that the individual parts can cannot always form the whole uh, material and uh, i can say the the forest if you take a forest you cannot explain the forest by studying only the individual trees it is a combination of trees different uh, animals water sunlight and all these things together form a forest so this is what holism says about an organism so the or you are considered as a part of the universe there is a sanskrit verse called yat pinde tat brahmande that means what is there in the universe it is also there inside each individual in the universe so you are a universe within the universe and you are a part of the nature so universe so holism use this concept to treat the individual so use nature's own properties to balance yourself so uh, these five things in the universe you know the five pancha mahabhutas pancha mahabhuta five bhutas in the universe these five pancha mahabhutas combine in the body to form three doshas three doshas in the body there is this is another verse in sanskrit that says uh, dosha dhatu mala moolo hi deha that means Uh, you do not have to tra translate uh, this in sanskrit i will tell it so the body is formed out of structural con constituents like dhadu and functional uh, elements like dosha and in the end waste materials like mala here you can see these three constituents you can see three poles in this picture but they together form a single structure so this is the basic concept of holism that is you are considered as a part of the whole you cannot survive without the whole you cannot survive individually now the holistic uh, approach towards a disease is based on these basic principles so the disease is an imbalance of dosha uh, akni mm -hmm. dhatu mala okay now i will show you how an etiology of a disease finally leads to a disease here the etiology leads to dosha vitiation and acne vitiation when this dosha and acne is vitiated it leads to formation of ama when dosha and acne are vitiated it leads to the formation mm. of ama and combination of uh, this dosha with ama leads to like uh, sama dosha like means dosha combines with ama then this dosha and ama combines with dhatu and these together will lead to combination of dosha dhatu 
and they localize in srotas. According to the srotas in which this localizes, it produces different diseases in the body. So here we can see the vitiation of dosha here, vitiation of acne, vitiation of dadu, vitiation of mala, leading to the disease. Now, the main aim of the physician is to remove the ama, normalize the dosha and normalize acne and reinstate the dhadu. So it seems quite simple that if you, if I say that all diseases are like this, uh, you just have to correct ama, dosha, acne, dhadu, then it seems quite simple. So this is the main argument against this principle. See, those people who are against this principle says that, so uh, the limitations of this principle is that it says, it is said that it oversimplifies the complex behaviors and it breaks down complex phenomenon into simple explanations. I think you also feel the same. This system, I mean, this concept simplifies the formation of the disease. But it is not always like that. Because if you ask me the concept of ama, see this concept of ama, you can see here, this concept of ah. ama is not that simple as we think. So what is ama? Ama is, ama is the unwanted products formed in the body due to improper digestion. Okay, it can be either, it can form either in the gastrointestinal tract like just an indigestion or it can be in a tissue level like a oozing skin lesion in a skin disease or it can be even deeper to the cellular or to the microscope I mean, like uh, uh, deeper cellular levels like in a cancer. So to correct AMA in this level may be easy but not that easy to correct in this level. So AMA in an indigestion is easy to correct but not that easy to correct the ama in a patient with cancer. Ama can be uh, like uh, sometimes functional and uh, sometimes structural. Here you can see a kidney stone. This is a structural or or it can be sometimes formed as a fa fat plate formed inside a blood vessel. So these two can, we can say are structurally a kind of armor. Sometimes it can be functional too. Like in, an, in the level of hormones, like improper hormonal functions in the body. Or sometimes in a nerve, upon his ability to assess this ama. Now let show let me show you the basic differences uh, between the approach of holism and reductionism. Reductionism basically uh, focuses on a single dominant factor. then pathogen causing this infection is the main area of concentration. 
the treatment focuses on usage of medicines which can kill this pathogen. The main focus is on the tumor. Cool. The treatment is based on isolation of a single factor most responsible for the observed behavior. This is reductionism. Yeah. This is at, multiple at factors like strength, area, season, etc. into consideration. Here the individual with the disease becomes the area of concentration. And the treatment is based on a collective approach. So, uh, for example, how do a person's sleeping habits, diet, living conditions, comorbidities, etc., and stress collectively can contribute to his or her heart disease? These factors are uh, Bella, Kala, Prakriti, Vaya, Sattva, Satmya, Ahara, Avastha, etc. For example, I will tell you, I will describe a disease and will tell you how these factors affect in this disease. For example, in the case of gastric disorders, gastric disorders are mostly seen in those with Pitta Prakriti. So, let me describe about uh, the conditions, uh, I mean, the relationship between Prakriti and diseases. So here for persons with Vata Prakriti, the status of digestion will be always Vishama. It won't be always stable. Digestion will be always unstable. So they are more susceptible to diseases like fecal constipation, piles in ano like this. And those with Pitta Prakriti are more susceptible to diseases of gastrointestinal tract. They will have more frequent loose bowels, gastric ulcers, etc. And those with Kapha Prakriti will always have diseases uh, like obesity, diabetes, etc. So this is the relationship between the prakriti and the possibility of diseases in an individual. Now uh, again, so uh, as I said, the gastric disorders are more seen in persons with pitta prakriti. And coming to bella, the power of the body. So these kinds of disorders are seen in persons with less immunity or with autoimmunity. So coming to this autoimmunity, usually the therapy in the conventional medicine is based on either activation of immune system or suppression of immune system. But Ayurvedic medicines have a special property to modulate the immune system. Drugs like Guduchi, Guduchi have special effect to modulate the immune system. So they do not activate the immune system nor they suppress the immune system. They will just modulate the system. That means they will have to keep the immune system of a body in a normal state. So coming back, uh, Kala, Kala means the season. So gastric disorders are more often seen to exaggerate in autumn and rainy season. You know why? Because in these two seasons, the Pitta, pitta has a tendency to vitiate, to exaggerate. Let's see the relationship between uh, the dosha and uh, the season. So the vata dosha 
will vitiate more during так вата доша in monsoon also pita dosha in monsoon получается во времена мусонов так же как и пита доша and the pita dosha will also vitiate also pita dosha will vitiate also in autumn season and uh, see kapha dosha vitiate in spring and winter season so this is the relationship between dosha and season and coming to the age these gastric disorders are more prominent in middle age again the reason is the same pitta dosha pitta is predominant in middle age and coming to sattva the power of the mind so gastric disorders are more seen in persons who are less in mental power or they are type a personality and also satnya satnya means unfamiliar life situations this this increase this gastric disorders next is ahara or improper food habits next is avastha or the stage of the disease so it can this gastric disorders can start as a belching and end as a gastric ulcer so the ayurvedic management of a gastric disorders include a holistic approach considering all these facts including this mental factor uh, there is a special branch of ayurvedic treatment it it concentrates on improving the mental state of the uh, patient ayurvedic treatment is mainly uh, in in such diseases ayurvedic treatment concentrate on the mental status of the patient and treat it so uh, this is called sattva avajaya chikitsa it's a kind of psychotherapy in ayurveda this brand describes the detailed uh, character of mind and its features it also explains the relationship between mind and body and how these mental factors develops into diseases in the body okay next is uh, importance of avastha or the stage of the disease for example the case of uh, diabetes uh, it can be divided into three stages pre diabetic early diabetic second one is complications uh, like neuropathy and third stage is weight loss and immune depression um. this first stage is predominant of kapha dosha second of pitta dosha and third of vata dosha so i just uh, said this example to tell you that the avastha can be different even in a single disease and the treatment also may be different according to this now uh, coming to an infection how ayurveda approaches an infective disease so as i have already told you uh, convention i mean uh, traditional medicine concentrates on the pathogen causing the infection but ayurveda concentrates on three basic levels three basic areas to treat an infection one is to remove the pathogen second one is to avoid uh, the positive atmosphere for the pathogen and third one is to remove the things which can host the pathogen and coming to the main one of the important diseases which is prevalent in india it is called tubercle bacillus i mean uh, tb tuberculosis is an infective disorder and it is the main i mean major killer um. in india this 
bacteria called tubercle bacillus invades the respiratory tract of the patient and finally damages the immune system и в итоге вредит его иммунной системе so uh, in india there was a irrational use of antibiotics against this uh, tubercle bacillus bacteria led to the development of bacteria which are multi drug resistant so that no more antibiotic can kill this bacteria this is one of the classic examples of problem arriving due to irrational use of medicines so now uh, the strategy in uh, deep tuberculosis uh, management has changed from medicines to food that means new slogan is give them food not medicine because when the person is not having any immune system in his body to resist the disease we cannot help him with medicines so see how ayurveda approaches to an infective disorder like tuberculosis it is mainly based on two things one is improve the acne i mean digestive power and second nourish the body we have wonderful medicines like uh, pipalia di monserasa and shatpala khrida which can help to both increase the digestion and nourish the body now coming to the concept of homeostasis теперь давайте поговорим о концепции гомеостаза illness is believed to be the failed state of homeostasis and it was explained by claude bernard in 19 sorry 1855 but i must say it was explained by charaga even 2000 years ago charaga said samadosha samaatmischa samadhatu malakriya prasanna atmaendri yamana swastha ityadi diyade that means it is the normal stage health is the normal state of dosha thatu mala mind uh, traditional medicine usually concentrates in the correction based on normal value of parameters for example value like t3 t4 tsh in hypothyroidism and blood glucose level in diabetes but the holistic approach is based on correction of deviated uh, based on the concept that correction of deviated parameters may have harmful side effects for example irrational use of insulin and hypoglycemic drugs for diabetes can lead to complications and hypertensive drugs can lead to complications in an individual so alternative and less intuitive targets may be more effective so holistic medicine emphasizes uh, not on a normal range but static stability of this uh, normal values stability of these values not static for example what is this dynamic stability in the day in the morning uh, time kapha will be predominant in an individual and in the noon time pitta evening vata so this means that an individual can go through all the stage stages of normalcy in a single day this rule is applicable to both diet season age and all as i have told you earlier in spring season kapha is predominant in autumn season pitta is predominant in winter season vata is predominant so the person may become unstable due to these factors in these seasons it is normal not abnormal and the treatment of diseases like diabetes and heart disease 
is based on uh, some holistic factors. Both diseases, both these diseases are produced due to excess nutrition. So here prevention is better than cure. Virginia. Daily regimens and seasonal regimens are essential for an individual to prevent these diseases. And also based on Rasayana therapy. In short, treatment of diabetes and heart disease is not only based on glu blood glucose level or blood pressure level. So, if there is uh, like inexact risk modification as we see today, then what happens is one risk factor to one disease approach is usually followed. For example, hypertension is considered as the main and uh, almost important cause of coronary heart disease. But the fact is that up to 30 percentage of coronary heart diseases develop in individuals with normal BP in US. This is based on, uh, these this findings are based on Framingham study. Now what happens is large number of people are at small risk uh, can um, develop heart diseases with uh, uh, people with, who have uh, high risk factors. So finally what happens? Cost of the strategy is that unnecessary treatment of individuals who wouldn't have had coronary heart disease in the first place. So the holistic approach is different from this. It works with multiple risk factors and calculate their collective influences. It is based on multiple dimensional analytical method. So here uh, hypertension, see uh, in, in, in uh, current practice, hypertension and hyperlipidemia are addressed separate issues as separate issues. See, you can see in this example, actually these two problems are not separate. They are two uh, manifestations of the same condition developed due to excess nutrition in the body and decreased exercises and lifestyle. Now the holistic approach is based on the complex interplay between these factors. So that uh, this approach is based on the assumption that information on the individual part is not sufficient to explain the whole. Uh, let me show you another example. Давайте я покажу вам еще один пример. This is allergy eczema syndrome. Это ниже представлен э, синдром экземы, э, аллергической экземы. Cause of this disease is food and regimen that increase the kaba dosha in the body. Причиной данного заболевания часто становится режим питания, который увеличивает капу в теле. When you treat the patient for allergy, I mean, any, the patient may be manifesting with some respiratory diseases, and when you treat for this respiratory diseases, this manifest as skin disease. Часто возникает вследствие лечения респираторных заболеваний, вследствие определенных медикаментов. So, when you treat for respiratory disease, then it lead to skin disease. When you treat for skin disease, then it lead to respiratory disease in the same person. То есть у одного и того же человека, когда вы лечите респираторные заболевания, начинается болезнь кожи, и когда вы начинаете лечить болезнь кожи, обостряются респираторные заболевания. Все у того же пациента. And what happens is the kapha vitiated in the body leads to the vitiation of rasa thadu in the body, and the stage of acne will be manda in the patient. Ama is formed in the body. It manifests as increased sputum in the respiratory tract or weeping ulcers on the skin. And if you can see these two diseases as a manifestation of this basic pathology, then you can treat it more easily. Now coming to this Ayurvedic pharmacology, 
there are some interesting facts. Yeah. Here, the same drugs can be used in different ways. I mean, to prepare in different ways as kashaya or decoction or arista as fermented products or grida or taila as oil insoluble constituents. Mm. Ingredients, mm. but in different vehicles. Gugulu tiktagam kashaya. It's a decoction of gugulu uh, and other drugs. It can be made as kashaya. The same ingredients can be made as oil like rhythm or it can also be made as asava or fermented products. These three things will give different results. And the same medicine can be used internally and externally. For example, according to the different level of paka, that means application of heat, the same medicine is used for internal purpose and for external purpose. For example, dhanyantaram tailam, this is an oil, and madhyashtiyadi tailam, this is another oil. And many diseases can be treated with the help of only one drug. For example, this is an oil called Shatpala Gruta. Malabsorption syndrome, respiratory disorders, and generalized swelling in the body. See how different they are. Because this medicine helps to correct the acne in the body. And all these diseases are produced due to imbalance in this acne. Vasha Gluchyadi is a decoction, which also can be used for different conditions. Gluchyadi, it's a decoction. No need to see. It can be, this is another medicine which can be used uh. for different conditions like hemolytic anemia, jaundice, bleeding disorders. These are all different conditions. The nasal route and rectal route of administration of medicine. As in Nasya and Ayurveda considers nose as the window to the head. It considers body as a tree and rectum as its root. These kinds of approaches are the peculiarity of only Ayurvedic medicine. Say these days the traditional medicine is also follow, trying to follow these principles. And there are different uh, kinds of uh, medication based on the time of application of medicine. Uh, around 11 types of uh, different uh, uh, a time of administration of medicine is described in classics. And coming to the, so uh, this is all about some, some uh, peculiarities of Ayurvedic pharmacology. I just mentioned all these things to have an idea of Ayurvedic pharmacology. Coming to the importance of diet in Ayurvedic treatment, Acharya Charaka has said these words. And Ayurveda has detailed explanation of the properties of cereals, pulses, millets, milk products, meats, vegetables and fruits and all kinds of foodstuffs which are available in the world now. And uh, see, if you, I can just show you an example of uh, Ayurvedic approach to the diet, how it is different from the conventional approach. These are two pulses. One is green graph, which is called Vigna radiata, and the other one is black graph, Fasciolus mungo. Both are protein-rich pulses. Uh. Uh, Ayurveda has a different approach uh, regarding the effect of these two pulses on the body. И Ayurveda имеет собственный подход к объяснению влияния этих пульсов на тело. Even though both are protein-rich foods, see, the green gram has a different effect on the body. It is, it has a different property and it uh, due to its property, it decreases the kapha and pitta in the body and it is good for rectha and for skin diseases. But the black gram have different property, I mean just opposite property to green gram and it increases kapha and pitta in the body and vitiate rectha and causes skin diseases. Совершенно действуют противоположным способом. Они повышают капу, питу, э, ослабляют ракту и э, могут вызывать кожные заболевания. How two pulses with the same 
protein in the uh, in it uh, affects in two different ways on the body. Just an example, Ayurveda explains all other food steps based on these properties. So these are some facts which I would like to mention you. If you know this, uh, I don't know whether you know about these facts. The rice from one year old grain is lighter than that from, it is good for uh, reducing kapha in the body. Milk and meat of the goat is the best and uh, not all uh, goats milk and meat is good but some variety of goats milk is good and the other variety is not i mean it is bad and red fish or rohitaka is the best fish and prawns or chilichima is the worst fish and uh, rice soup changes its property according to the amount of water present in it so it is like this uh, soup with less rice more water or soup with equal water and equal rice or soup with more rice and less water three kinds of see both three, these three are three are the same soup but they have different property on our body different effect on our body and this uh, ginger leaf that means tila tila is the seed from which we make taila or oil so it is uh, called to touch if you apply it on the skin it is called in character but if you take its oil then it is hot in character and unboiled milk is heavy that means it is abhishyandi and guru i am not sure whether you are familiar with this uh, like uh, terminals i mean uh, this uh, terminologies uh, but if you are familiar then you can understand unboiled milk is heavy it is guru obstruction in small channels in the body in property that is it is light it is not heavy with less water is even heavier like this each and every diet uh, in our daily life is explained by ayurveda with a different concept theories these are based on practical experience of years of uh, clinical experience now uh, coming to the treatment in ayurveda uh, i would like to mention you uh, where ayurveda can act in which diseases Ayurveda can do wonders. Active in gastrointestinal, orthopedic, neurological, dermatological, and reproductive medicine. Supports and boosts vital bodily functions. If taken under expert medicine, medical supervision. Coming to psychosomatic diseases, this is the most uh, important uh, scenario in in our daily life right now. In a metro, I mean, in a, in a city like uh, uh, Moscow or other cities like Novosibirsk. This is the biggest problem for the human being right now. Stress, in treating stress, and other some special areas where Ayurveda can do wonders: menstrual disorders, infertility, skin diseases, uh, malabsorption disorders, back pain, stroke. I mean, stroke rehabilitation, old age care, etc. And what is the clinical approach we follow? Clinical approach is based on assessment, uh, based on functional uh, assessment of Tridoshic scale. That means 10 point examination scale. I told you earlier, Dosha, Tushya, Bala, Kala, Anala, Prakriti, Vaya, Sattva, Satya, and these 10 factors. And uh, it usually takes consultation of uh, one to two hours duration with a complete assessment of these 10 factors on diet and daily regimens for the patient, internal and external therapies. And what is the role of yoga therapy in the treatment of Ayurvedic medicine? Hear about yoga, these kinds of postures come into our mind. Away from yoga, thinking that they cannot do such postures. All about yoga therapy. Yoga therapy ha is based on the assessment of the problem and selection of only those asanas which are suitable for the individual. So you need not have to do such asanas if you want to follow yoga therapy. Do those asanas which you can do and which you need to do, not all asanas. Why, why I should mention this is because there is a uh, 
A wrong belief among the population that yoga therapies post for postures like this. One of the eight branches of yoga. And coming to marma therapy. Marma therapy is the correction of vital energy in the body. In the body, done with the help of fingers. Recovery from specific clinical conditions. Она помогает для быстрого восстановления при специально специфических болезненных состояниях. For the Ayurvedic treatment, main treatment. And uh, finally, I would like to show you a recent Indian newspaper from CCMB. CCMB is uh, one of the uh, leading research centers in molecular biology in India. Genetic basis for the concept of Prakriti in Ayurveda. Would like to say is that this concepts of Ayurvedic medicine, this holistic approach based on Prakriti, Dosha, etc., can be proved using modern techniques. Principles of Ayurvedic, I mean, many of the Ayurvedic basic principles are being accepted by the current science. So, uh, this is what all I have to say. Learn Ayurveda. Love Ayurveda and live Ayurveda. Yeah. Namaste. Um, so um, um, maybe our uh, listeners might have questions, um, okay. Mr. Dr. Navin. Um, let, let me take a look. So the first question is by uh, Ms. Valentina Zubova. Uh, she asks, uh, which uh, prepared uh, dishes and diet uh, can help to balance free doshas? Okay. Hello, Valentina. So she wants to know which diet balances three doshas. Добрый день, Валентина. Uh, yes, yes, she wants to know which which dishes help See, balance three doshas. You cannot uh, suggest a single uh, diet which can uh, balance all the three doshas in a normal state. I told you earlier, there are some uh, uh, food materials which increase uh, some doshas. So if you want to balance all the doshas, for example, if I take one food which increase the kapha in my body, then I should combine this food with another food which will decrease kapha in my body. So that this increase and decrease will come to a balance in your body. So this is all about combination of different foodstuffs. Foodstuffs we should take into consideration uh, the stat. As I have told you, we cannot uh, say uh, a single answer like uh, when we uh, select these foodstuffs we have to consider other factors like uh, prakriti of the individual acne of the individual bella of the individual season as i have told you all these factors we have to consider so we have not a single answer if you ask me which foodstuff then i cannot say you this person it is con it is based on all the other factors which influence you so one of the questions is, if you're using your recommendations, uh, Shatkarmas. Um, do you use Shatkarmas, uh, Shatkarmas for your recommendations? Oh, yes, yes. Yes. So this is the question. Hello? Yes, uh, it is one of the questions. It, it's just totally different. And another one is, uh, what, what uh, proportion of water in uh, food uh, dishes with rice, um, how, how does it change um, the constitution of the, of the dish? Um, does more water add vata or less water increases vata? Or how does it influence on the final dish? Actually, uh, this amount of water in, our, in this uh, uh, soups uh, gives different effects. For example, uh, we call if we eat and less rice, it is it will help to increase your uh, power of digestion. So open your uh, minute channels in your body. And uh, it has a um, bubble but immune system. I'm sorry. My means uh, the bubble movements. Stool. What do you mean by bubble? So it is good for people with less digestion and complaints like constipation, etc. And less water, then it has the opposite result. Uh, reduce the bubble movement. That means if you are having a loose bubble, then if you take uh, soup with more rice and less water, then it will help to reduce this loose motion. 
the strength of your body um, okay so um, uh, the question about shat karmas yes, shall we shall we leave it or can you can you uh, basic uh, 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 basic storm of ayurvedic panchakarma treatment we do all this the ayurvedic treatment is actually based on shat karmas so we used to do shat karmas um, can you hear me i will i will write uh, i will write it Hichari product uh, is written like this. Um, can it be uh, used for all doshas or for some? It is better for some. This uh, spiced yellow dal with rice called Hichari. Um, yes, yes, I will repeat. Um, spiced yellow dal with rice. It is called Hichari. Is it um, good for do for? with uh, rice uh, yes so is it uh, good it for all doshas or for, all for some it is better Rai for, for is some it's worse which increases pitta in your body so uh, if you have uh, any kapha pitta problem in your body then better not to take that so dear uh, dr navin is the ayurvedic uh, product products are they uh, compatible with uh, hormonal therapy uh, uh, due to in, infertility, uh, maybe different oils, uh, yes. herbal medicine, uh, medicine or teas. In uh, cases of infertility, actually, and we used to get good results for uh, cases which couldn't get any results from other medications. Uh, um, okay, um, so uh, it seems uh, uh, mm -hmm. it is all questions uh, from our visitors for now. They are mm -hmm. really grateful. Um, for your for your answers, for your presentation, and I think it was uh, for all of us. It was a pleasure to talk with you, and uh, uh, thank you again for your time.